This feature is powered by the National Gas Company of Trinidad and Tobago at the forefront of energy. By Quarry and Warsaw also. Dieter Brock from West Germany looking from East Germany looking strong here. Plans going well. And at this stage, Crawford only slightly ahead. And we're all waiting for the promise of the three middle runners, Warsaw, Quarry and Plans. But Crawford is still there. Quarry coming on strongly now as Crawford continues to hold his form beautifully. And Quarry's lead at the tape can't get there. Crawford, Quarry, both are leading for third. And on July 24th, 1976, Hazy Crawford faced the starters at the men's 100 meter final at the Olympic Games in Montreal, Canada. 10.06 seconds later, Trinidad and Tobago had its first Olympic gold medal. Today in Sporting Nation, we hear from one of the athletes he inspired over a generation, Ephraim Surratt. Mr. Surratt, the name Hazley Crawford, what does that name mean to you? Hazley Crawford, a tough icon representing Trinidad Tobago. For me, um, we would have had the likes of Wendell and Edwin Roberts in the early 60s. But I think when Hazley won the gold in 1976, Track and field, you know, it really opened up for track and field. I mean, he would have been doing good stuff before that while in college in Michigan. And, um, but track and field, I think, on the world stage, I think Hazley would have been that 100 meters gold medal in Montreal really set the stage for Trinidad and Tobago elevation. You would have competed against them. You would have been, um, known them as a friend. Describe his character for us. Well, Hazley continues to be my mentor. Uh, he was the one responsible for me getting involved in the administration of the sport. Um, I, I also tell him, tell him at times that he's the one who is responsible for me getting you know, scholarships because having defeated him in 77 after the Olympics, uh, a number of schools would have reached out, you know, inquiring about who is this junior athlete who would have defe defeated the Olympic champion. He's a very casual guy, come from humble beginnings, um, loves a joke, loves a joke and he's very, very funny when he's ready. But he's um, family oriented and um, I think sometimes he, he is very passionate about this sport of track and field and sometimes feels that the not sufficient is being done for the development of the sport. How much of a generation would you think he would have influenced from his performances, um, not just the Olympic Games, but even before that, being the man that put Trinidad and Tobago 100 meters sprinting on the map? I think to date he continues to influence influence uh, you know our our athletes um, because between him, Atto Bolden, Kishon Walcott, um, goal in 2012, the, the the men's relay team in 17 and 18 and even. 18 with Jareem and Michelle and now the coming with the recent common Commonwealth Games. Um, he I think he um, his role was you know a big role in that with athletes coming forward from that time. You know, you think um, he got he gets the recognition he deserves for what he has been able to do for Trinidad today with track and field. If if I'm to answer for him, I would say he doesn't he doesn't think so. Um, but he has been He's, he's very humble and grateful for whatever has been done. And, um, but he just continues to have this passion and feels that much more should be done for the sport of track and field. Glance away very quickly. Borzov trying to move up. Quarry's going with him. On the inside is Hazley Crawford. Crawford's going to be there. He's got the goals. Quarry's got the Take us back to July 24th, 1976. What was the mood like in Trinidad and Tobago? It was wild. It was similar to the, the, the strike squad or the, the, the team qualifying for the 2006 uh, World Cup. So, you know, it was a, a, a happy moment for Trinidad and Tobago, a big achievement, a winning a gold medal at the Olympics, fastest human in, 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 the, in the world. And um, even the reception coming back to Trinidad, the then Prime Minister, you know, I think the motorcades and all the accolades that was 
um, bestowed on him. I think it, it was it was it's not something that you could really describe. It almost looks like the entire population of Trinidad and Tobago have come out here tonight to pay tribute to our great Trinidad hero, Mr. Hazley Crawford. You know, and that time Trinidad and Tobago is a new nation, more or less. Uh, we have just gotten independence. Um, we'll be, I think we were still in a republic by then. Um, tell me how much of uh, um, what Keesley did put this dot called Trinidad and Tobago on the world map and track and field. I, I think it did a lot because in my travels, um, when you go to any part of the world and you say Trinidad and Tobago, the first thing people would ask Casey Crawford or Brian Lara, you know, even Dwight York, you know. So those are the, the icons that are the importance of sport, you know, so the, the sporting icons would put the country on the world on the world map. And um, I think, you know, for still to this day, you know, when you travel and you say Trinidad and Tobago, those are the names that come up and with Hazley included. Administratively from your time, from that time to now, um, how do you feel about the evolution of track and field? It's a big turnaround. Um, you know, back in the day, you would say that most sporting organizations would have operated out of a car trunk. Um, we now have an uh, organization that is structured in a business type way because sport is big business. So that the sport then and now is two, two different things. And I think with the administration these days, as seeking sponsorship and those kinds of things, I think it's it all goes well for the sport. This feature was powered by the National Gas Company of Trinidad and Tobago at the forefront of energy.